Hi guys, welcome to the practical lecture of K-Means clustering with Python using its machine learning library Scikit-Learn. In the previous theory lecture, we have discussed the key concepts and working principle behind K-Means clustering. It's time to learn by doing. As always, a code notebook is provided in the course material for your reference. You are always welcome to consult the notebook at any stage. In this lecture, we will learn to artificially create the clustering data and then we will train and deploy the k-means clustering algorithm to our data set. At the end, we will see how elbow method works to estimate the best value for k. Let's move on to the new Jupyter notebook and start with importing some important libraries. Let's import matplotlib and seaborn at the moment. So import matplotlib. You can always press tab for autocomplete. Dot .py plot as plt and import seaborn as sns. And let's set matplotlib inline matplotlib inline and run this cell. Creating artificial clusters is very easy. We can use scikit-learn's built-in method make underscore blob to create these clusters. To do this, we need to import make blobs first. So let's do another import from sklearn dot datasets import make blobs and run this cell. So our data is going to be data equal to make underscore blob and we need to pass in some parameters here. If you press shift tab you have n samples, n features, centers, cluster std which is cluster standard deviation and another one that we are going to use is random states. N samples is the total number of points equally divided among clusters. Default value is 100. We can pass in 500, 1000 or whatever we want. Number of features, how many features we want in our sample, how many centers we want, the default value is 3, and the standard deviation of the clusters. We will pass in random state equal to 42 so that we get the same results every time we run this cell. So let's copy these parameters, paste them here, and delete these, what we are not going to use, and pass in some values here. So let's pass in n samples equal to 1000. We can leave features equal to 2 because we want two features in our data. Let's pass in center equal to four. So we want four blobs or four clusters. And instead of one, let's pass in standard deviation equal to three and random state equal to 42 so that we get the same results whenever we run this code. So let's run this cell. And now we have created data for our lecture. It's always good to see how the data looks like. Let's move on, add few cells, and see how the data looks like. So here we have. So the data is actually a tuple with two arrays. This array has two columns. These are the two features what we have created. And the array two is actually the label for each data point, which tells which data point belongs to which cluster. Let's move on and grab the first element in our data. So data at zero index and let's check the length of this first element as well. Data at zero and run this cell. So we notice that the first element is a NumPy array with number of samples equal to 1000 and two columns as two features. Let's call shape attribute on data zero and see how its shape look like. So data at zero dot 
shape and run this cell. Here we have 1000 samples. So 1000 entries or 1000 number of samples and each has two features. So now we have created the data. It's always good to have the visual information from our data. We can use a scatter plot here. We know we have four clusters or four blobs in our data, which is at zero index. Let's plot the data and pass in column one to X and column two to Y. So plt dot scatter and our X is equal to data at zero. And we want everything, mean all the rows at zero. And our Y is going to be data zero. And once again, we want all the rows in column one. And let's run this cell. And here we have our scatter plot. It does look very nice. Fortunately, we have labels for all these data points in data at one index. This is unsupervised learning. And in reality, you don't know these labels. But we have created the data and we know the labels. Let's pass in these labels as C to the scatter plot. So copy this code here, paste it here, and pass in C equal to data at one and rerun this cell. And here we have a black and white plot with four clusters one, two, three, and four. We can pass in C map equal to say rainbow and rerun this cell and this one is colorful plot now we can clearly see four different clusters with four colors once again just to remind you that you don't know which data point belongs to which cluster in the real data set or in the real life projects so let's move on to the machine learning now as always we need to import the model and create its instance Let's import the k-means model first, which is a part of cluster in sklearn. So from sklearn dot cluster import k-means with capital K and capital M. And let's run this cell. Now we need to create an instance. So k-means is going to be our instance. k-means equal to k means and if we press shift tab we have n clusters here and some other parameters so we have n clusters equal to 8 which is default value we need to tell the number of clusters here in our case we already know that we have four clusters in our data set however in real life we don't know how many clusters we have and which data point belongs to which cluster. In this case, we are learning and we have created the data with given k and we also know which data point belongs to which cluster, which is in data at zero index. So let's pass in number of clusters n clusters equal to four because we know we have four clusters and run this cell. So we have created an instance with number of clusters equal to four. The next step is as always, we need to train our model. In k-mean clustering algorithm, we are going to train our model on complete data set. We are not going to split this data set in training and testing because this is unsupervised learning. So we need to pass in all the data at zero index to fit. So k means dot fit pass in data at zero index and run this cell. And here we have trained our model on data at zero index with number of clusters equal to four. We can check the centers for these clusters now because our model is trained and it has created clusters for all these four centers. Remember, we passed in number of cluster equal to four. So our model is trained with number of clusters equal to four. We can check the cluster centers as well. So k means dot cluster underscore centers and run this cell. And here we have centers for the clusters that our model has created. 
let's pass into send so that we can use later on so send and read on this cell here we have our clusters in send now let's add few cells and check the labels for all the data points that our model has created we can call dot label underscore on k means to check the labels that our model has created for each data point so k means dot label underscore and run this cell and here we have the predicted labels from our model fortunately we already knew the labels for all our data points and now we have the predicted labels for all our data points we can create a very useful scatter plots here one with c as the predicted labels and one with c as the original labels in this way if we put these plots side by side we can compare how the model has created new clusters in our data set let's move on and use subplots in matplotlib so fake pass in x1 and x2 x1 and x2 for two plots equal to plt dot subplots and pass in n rows 1 and n calls equal to 2 you can press shift tab and just to recall we have n calls n rows we can share axes we can share x axis we can share y axis and some more parameters because we are creating one row we can pass in share y axis share y equal to true and let's tell the figure size here as well fix size equal to say 10 and 6 let's run this cell and here we have two canvases now we can put the data points on left with predicted labels at c and on right with known labels or the original labels as c so let's grab axis ax1 and call scatter plot and pass in x data 0 and we want all the rows in the first column so all the rows in the first column and we want y data 0 and now we want to grab all the rows in the second column and now let's copy this code and paste it here for our second plot and put it on axis 2 in the first one on our left side let's pass in c equal to k means dot labels so these are our labels which are predicted by the k means clustering algorithm and we know our labels in c equal to data at 1 so let's run this cell and here we have these are our predicted labels as c and these are our original labels as c it's black and white we can give some colors to this plot so we can pass in c map equal to rainbow and rerun this cell and here we have a better looking plot and let's pass in c map to the second plot as well and rerun this cell and here we have so this one is our original data because we are passing c as data 1 at axis 2 and this one is our data after clustering algorithm we can clearly see difference between these two plots this is the original data with some overlapping in clusters here whereas in the plot on our left side we have four clusters from our k means model we know the centroids for these clusters and the centers from our model are in cent let's put the centers on these clusters as well so grab ax1 scatter plot and our x is cent 
we want all the rows and the first column as x and we want all the rows and the second column as y and let's run this cell now here we have the centroids for these four clusters so these centroids are calculated from our k-mean clustering algorithm let's pass in size here s equal to say we want 100 and read on this cell and these are little bigger now we can change the color here as well so we can pass in color c equal to say black and read on this cell so here we have the centroids for our four clusters in black color let's move on to the elbow method to estimate the k value in our case we already know the k value because we have created the data with four clusters now we have an opportunity to check number of clusters suggested by elbow method we know we have four clusters let's see how many clusters elbow method is going to suggest us so moving forward i'm going to create a dictionary here sum underscore i would say sq equal to empty dictionary so i have initialized sum underscore sq as an empty dictionary because i want k values as the key and their respective sum of squared distances as value let's test the k from 1 to 10 we can use range function in the for loop here so for k in range i want 1 to 10 k means equal to k means and pass in n clusters equal to k so every time in the loop k is changing from 1 to 10 and i want to call fit here and pass in my data at zero i'm just trying to put complete code in a single line otherwise we can split this code here and create an instance and then call fit on this instance as well like i can do k means dot fit as well but i still want to put this complete code in one line so moving forward i want to introduce another attribute inertia in k means so inertia is actually the sum of square distance of the sample to their closest cluster centers so we can call inertia on k means to get the sum of the square distances this is very simple so let's call k means dot inertia underscore let's pass into sum underscore s q at k equal to k means inertia so k is going to be our key and k means dot inertia which is the sum of squared distance for respective k is going to be the value in our dictionary let's run this cell so something went wrong here inertia i n e r t i a so it's spelling mistake and let's rerun this cell so now we have dictionary with k as the keys and respective sum of square distances as the value let's check this dictionary sum underscore s q and run this cell and here we have one two three four up to nine we have the values for k and respective sum of square distances so moving forward let's plot k along x axis and the respective sum of square distances along y axis we can use plt or matplotlib plot function here so plt dot plot pass in sum underscore sq dot keys and then put it into list and list pass in sum underscore sq dot values and run this cell it should be values so here we have so we have the plot where k is along x axis and the sum of square distances are along y axis so we see that somehow the elbow method is suggesting cluster size equal to 4. 
If you want, we can do some figure aesthetics here as well. Let's see. We want line style equal to say we want continuous line. So the marker, we want hexagons. And let's say we want color equal to passing G for green and marker size is say we want 10 and marker face color say we want red and read on this cell here we have so we have the data points in red colors which are hexagons the line which is connecting the data point is in green color once again this plot is suggesting somehow the value of k from the elbow method is 4. So excellent work guys. This was all about the k-mean clustering algorithm. Let's have a quick overview on what we did and then we will move on to the project exercise. So we started with importing some libraries such as matplotlib and cbon. Then we moved on imported make underscore blobs built-in function in scikit-learn and created our data with four clusters and the labels. Then we just checked how the data looks like and we got the scatter plot for our data set. We passed in labels as C and we see that we have four clusters in our created data. Then we moved on and we imported k-means clustering model. We passed in number of clusters equal to four and created its instance and then we trained our model. We got the cluster centroids in scent and then we checked the labels from our trained model. Then we moved on and we got two scatter plots side by side. In the one we passed in the predicted labels as C, in the second we passed in the original labels on our right side. We clearly see the differences between these two plots. With k-means clustering, the algorithm is doing adjustments in clusters and creating new clusters in our data. Then we put the cluster centroids on the data set as well that we got from our trained model. Then we moved on towards the ALBO method. We checked the k value from 1 to 9 and used the range function. Then we plotted k against the respective sum of squared distances and we reconfirmed that somehow the k value is 4 and this is what we already had in our original data because we created our data with 4 clusters. So guys, I hope you got a very good understanding on k-means clustering algorithm. I suggest you to go through this lecture once again before you move on to the project overview. In the next lecture, we are going to have a quick overview on the project and after that, we will go through the exercises together and try to solve all the tasks in the project. See you in the next lecture. Good luck.